So welcome guys to Rest of Designs and to another installment of Project Freebie. So in this little three part mini series, I'm dealing with some of the interior and the exterior of this car. It's to actually improve the car, make it more pleasurable to drive. Because these classic cars, they are nice. You know, they're kind of, you get a feeling from the car, noises and stuff, but you don't want excessive noise because then it actually makes the car less enjoyable. And this is part two in that little mini series. And if you haven't seen part one of this little mini series, I recommend you do watch that. It's where I take the headlighting off and I sort out the dashboard and loads of squeaks and rattles. Today's video will be covering refitting the headlining all in black so it's gonna look nice and fresh, removing the sunroof totally and actually servicing the up so it runs smoothly and adjusting it perfectly. Finally fitting a head unit to the car, doing some more soundproofing and fitting a little base box unit in the boot. So this is a, a little Kenwood under seat unit which never fits under the seats on the Mark IIs and on the Mark III's. Some more soundproofing gonna put under the rear carpets. So these are off the Mark IV Golf. So, you know, you've got 20 years of evolution. So these are gonna be a lot more effective in uh, dampening sounds and vibration into the cabin. So with that in mind, first things first, I guess, let's remove the front seats. Well, that took all of 20 minutes to take out. They're really quite easy, these Mark II Golfs taking off all the seats. So this is what it looks like now at the moment. So that's kind of how I left it when I first got the car, I cleaned it. So again, it's pretty simple. It was all clean, which made my life a lot easier. If you haven't seen that video, it's a bit of a horror movie. The amount of grime that came out of this car was absolutely disgusting. <laughs> but anyway, moving on. Uh, that's the first layer down of the soundproofing down. Now I'm just gonna get one of these rear Mark IV underlays, or whatever you wanna call this, and see. So if I don't say so myself, I've cut this to perfection, and it was quite a good idea to have actually kept this, because like I said, it's even got that little indentation for this cross brace along here, and it fits perfectly. It's gonna be a bit more puffier than what would have been there originally, but then this is gonna fill the carpet up. It's gonna be interesting to see how the carpet actually settles in and tucks under these little spots. This is always a bit more time consuming, but that's actually Velcro down now with some Velcro pads. I've run, like I said, the power along that side. And I've just put in a, a basic Sony head unit I had laying around, so I will get a better one. Let's see how it looks. It's gonna be interesting to see. All right, guys. So as you can see, I kind of loosely got it down. That looks perfect. It's not too fluffy at all. It hasn't deformed the carpet in any shape, way or form. Fits perfectly around the runners as well. That's gonna be a nice improvement in sound and in feel to the car. It's coming together really quite nice. So, okay, so now I guess it's putting this lot back in the car. All right guys, so it's actually been a few days that's actually passed. It's been about a week. Uh, I'm a week in with COVID. I can't take it at home anymore, resting around. I'm here isolating in the workshop by myself. I'm not affecting anyone, at least I'm out of the house now. Uh, I've still got a bad cough and a bit blocked, so I do apologize for that, guys, on the video. The headlining's back from the trimmers. I just picked that up, uh, or he dropped it around, because obviously because of my COVID restrictions. And, um, and yeah, we're gonna fit this on. Now, the first thing to do when you're actually doing a headlining, if you have a sunroof car, is you gotta remove the sunroof. Do it now. Don't try and put it up and then try and remove the sunroof, because you actually do need to trim the bit of material that goes around the sunroof and then stick it actually to the car. Uh, some people kind of maybe forget that and just cut the sunroof a whole out material and put it on and then realize, hold on, it's too short. I've left it short by about 10 mil. No, no, you need to do it this way around first. So, all right, so it's really quite a simple process. Just gonna remove these Phillips here, 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 then here, and then literally be able to push up the sunroof. It's quite easy. Just be careful not to damage anything. There we go. This could actually do with, this wind deflector could actually do with a lick of paint. So now the next thing to do is to remove all these screws along there, as well as also the handle. So I've dismantled it all. Now it's really quite easy. Just be careful. Just pull it all out as one piece. See, it's really quite easy taking it off. It's only maybe, I don't know, what, 10 screws or so, and it all comes off. And this is the bit I'm talking about, 
which needs to be stuck on. As you can see, it's got loads of old residue of, of the old glue and stuff on here. So I'm just gonna quickly get a paintbrush, take off all the dust and then remove all the, the loose old glue. I might as well just clean the whole area, basically. Probably hasn't been cleaned in 30 years under here, so. <laughs> All right, guys, so this is the first time you've seen the headlining, and I think the guy's done a bit of a miracle job here because it was in such a bad way, and he's done a really, really good job. Also done for me the headline, uh, he's also done the sunroof bit and actually put a little bit of stitching in there to imitate what was there originally, and also the little handle cover as well. Okay, so now I'm gonna very carefully feed this through. What I'm gonna to do to help me actually, I might actually lift up the headrests so that I can kind of feed it on and actually rest it on the headrests and then start putting up the C pillars, the A pillars and the B pillars to actually hold the in in place before I actually put the grommets in and all the rest of it. This is so precarious. These things are just so damaged so easy. See if I can lift it up. Yes. All right, guys. So it's definitely time consuming, but well worth it. I mean, the more time and you take your time fitting it, it looks so much better. So all the A, B and C pillars are on. Uh, the sunroof surround is on. As you can see, I was also, I kind of glued it on with some contact spray glue and then put the seal on. So, you know, this is why you take the whole mechanism off as well as just slide the cover in. It's also to kind of get all this done nicely. And all the GTI trims are all done and it looks so much nicer in there already. I'm really looking forward to taking this for a little, for its first drive with the new headlining. I'm sure the car's gonna feel still a 1.3, but a lot more luxurious inside. All right, so now it's gonna slide in the sunroof bit and get this mechanism back in the car. All right guys, so doing the headlining is one of the most time consuming, fiddly, you have to be really patient with it, but boy, it's also one of the most rewarding jobs to do. Once it's done and you've done it right, you know you've done it right because it just looks absolutely amazing and I'm over the moon in how it's turned out. Yep, all you can see is black. It's really, really cool. All right, guys, let me just finish this off now, get that wind deflector on, and we take this for a drive. Having a classic car doesn't mean it has to be noisy, uncomfortable, rattly, and just tiring to drive. It doesn't have to be that way. So what I can say about these last two eight videos is that it was definitely worth the extra effort because the car just feels so nice and well screwed together. Um, I don't have a noisy, speedo anymore that little bit of grease actually in the speedo cable made a lot of difference actually you can improve things just with a little bit of time and effort and a little bit of attention to detail as well it can go a long long way into improving your overall enjoyment and experience of a classic car because you know a mark ii now is, is is a classic this car is 31 years old now that is classic modern classic whatever you want to call it what can I say about driving the Mark II? I love driving this car, even with this little 1.3 engine. Just chuck it into a roundabout. And the front just grips. It's very neutral. The modifications I've done on this, I'm very happy with it. I can't wait to get the ABF in here. And also because the gearbox that I'm going to be fitting has got an LSD in it, so it's not even going to upset the handling. If anything, it might even improve the handling even more having the LSD, because as you put the power in, it's just gonna pull the car in tighter. This is gonna be a lot of fun, this car. Definitely a lot of fun. Please like, subscribe, really helps me out, helps the channel out, helps helps the whole thing, really. Uh, it means a lot to me if I can get this channel up off the ground this year. Last year was kind of a foundation year. Let's see if this year we can push and get this channel as far as I can get it. Um, if you guys have any comments, any suggestions, leave them in the comments. Like, subscribe, 
ding-a-ling-a-ling, -a -ling -a -ling, click on that notification bell, and I'll be seeing you guys in the next video.